Muhammad's followers tell the world that their Quran contains all knowledge, 1400 years ahead of its time, especially the case of the earth being round. Is this true? In Arabic, earth is called Ard. Mountains or ships' anchors are called Rawasiya. Please keep these in mind when listening to or reading this chapter. Muhammad and his Quran show incredible contempt and total disregard for fact and truth. Even when they are plagiarizing, plundering, and pirating from previously inspired revelations by the Almighty, they invariably pervert and contort what they are stealing to make it look original and different. A few thousands of years ago, the Bible clearly recorded that the earth is round and that it is hung on nothing. Isaiah 40.22 It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Job 26.7 he stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. Muhammad taught his followers that just as there are seven heavens, one above another, plagiarized as usual from the traditions of the Jews, so there are seven earths, one beneath another, the distance between each of these regions being 500 years journey. Miskat al-Masabih by At-Tabrizi. The Quran challenges all established scientific facts. In many places, it asserts that the earth is flat and stretched out like a carpet, and its mountains are like poles or pegs to hold it and create a balance so that the earth does not tilt. Let us investigate what the Quran says about the earth. Al-Hajr 15.19 And the earth, Ard, we have spread out like a carpet, Maddadnaha, set thereupon mountains firm and immovable. Rawasiya. The modern translator of the Quran tells us, in highly poetical language, the earth is described as spread out like a carpet, on which the hills act as weights to keep it steady. Al-Nahl 16.15 And he has set up on the earth, Ard, mountain standing firm, Rawasiya, lest it should shake with you. He adds, here and elsewhere, the earth is spoken of as a spacious carpet, beneath our feet and the hills as a steadying agent to keep the carpet from rolling or shaking about. They are spoken of as pegs or stakes. Al-Kahf 18.47 One day we shall remove the mountains and thou wilt see the earth as a level stretch. Barizata Taha 20.53 He who has made for you the earth earth like a carpet spread out Mahadda, Al-Anbiya 21.31 And we have set on the earth, Ard, mountains standing firm, Rawasiya, lest it should shake with them. He explains, Mihad, a carpet or bed spread out. Qaf 50.7 And the earth, Al-Ard, we have spread it out, Maddadnaha, and set thereupon mountain standing firm, Rawasiya. This is accompanied by the comments of the following Muslim scholars. al Jalalain, page 437, Baydawi, page 686, Tabari, page 589, and Zamakhshari, part 4, page 381. All of them assure us that if it were not for these unshakable mountains, the earth would slip away. Zamakhshari, the Baydawi, and Jalalain say, Allah has built heaven without pillars but he placed unshakable mountains on earth lest it tilts with the people. These are the comments of the ancient Muhammadan Muslim scholars word for word. Al-Naba 78.6 Have we not made the earth as a wide expanse, mihadda, and the mountains as pegs? What is even more remarkable and most disturbing is the fact that some Saudi scholars wrote a book to disprove the spherical aspect of the earth and they claimed that it is a myth, agreed with the above-mentioned scholars, and said we must believe the Qur'an and reject all other statements to the contrary. When dogma is so deeply embedded, logic, reality, and facts are replaced by stupidity, myth, and outright lies. Al-Ghashiyah 88.17 Will they not regard the camels how they are created, and the earth how it is spread, Suttihat. On page 509, the Jalalain say, In this phrase, how it is spread, 
He denotes that the earth is flat. All the scholars of Islamic law agree upon this. It is not round as the physicists claim. What forced Jalalain to say so? Because the Quran asserts in many chapters that the earth is flat. And no true Muhammadan can ever contradict the Quran in public and live. Muhammadan scholars who agree upon the meaning of this verse believe as a Jalalain state. Allah has founded firm mountains on earth lest it shake people. Pages 270-271. On page 429, Al-Baydawi says, Allah has made firm mountains on earth lest it sway people and quake. He also made heaven as a ceiling and kept it from falling down. Al-Zamakhshari agrees with the above authors and reiterates the same words in Zamakhshari part 3, page 114. It is well known that the Qur'an proclaims that there are seven earths, not just one. al Jalalain, page 476, Al-Baydawi, page 745, as they interpret chapter Al-Talaq, 65.12. Allah is he who created seven firmaments and of the earth a similar number. The seven earths, which are 500 years journey from each other, are situated one beneath the other and each of these seven regions has a special occupants. The occupants of the first are men, genie, and animals. The second is occupied by the suffocating wind, which destroyed the infidel tribe of Al-Ad. The third is filled with the stones of hell, mentioned in the Quran, Surah 2.22, 66.6, as the fuel of which is men and stones. The fourth, by the sulfur of hell. The fifth, by the serpents of hell. The sixth, by the scorpions of hell, which are in size and color like black melons and have tails like spears. And the seventh, by the devil and his angels. The above is but a brief outline of the Muhammadan belief as regards the earth's formation. But the statements of Muhammadan commentators are so wild on the subject that it seems quite useless to quote them as authorities, for they contradict each other in an endless variety. It is evident that the earth is not flat, nor are the mountains, the pillars, and the towerings which prevent the earth from moving, as the Qur'an and the Muhammadan scholars assert. Nor are there seven earths. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 5688, narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, Allah Messenger pointed to something like a bowl and said, If a piece of lead like this were sent from heaven to earth, which is journey for 500 years, it would reach the earth before night, and if it were sent from the top of the chain, it would travel 40 years, night and day, before reaching its foot or its bottom. Muhammadan Muslims venerate Muhammad to the extent that they believe he represents the best man that has ever lived, as well as the one with the most knowledge of almost everything. Even the translator confirmed the meaning of the verses, and hence no Muhammadan can accuse others of any kind of misunderstanding or misinterpretation. It is easy to accept that a mere human being such as Muhammad can be wrong. It is infinitely more difficult to allow that Gabriel, the messenger of Allah, if Allah is the same as the God of Israel and Jesus, is mistaken. It is blasphemy to think that Allah is wrong if Allah is God. Based upon the above few samples only, no divine being could have ever revealed such verses regarding the spherical earth and its mountains. To unravel the riddle of the above anomalies, stupidities, irrationalities, contradictions and blatant lies, the reader has to come to the one and only rational explanation, that Allah is not the God of Israel, but the name of the supreme pagan rock God of the Kaaba. The reader also knows that no rock God could inspire any human being. Hence, the final conclusion can only be that Muhammad, Gabriel, Allah, and Satan are Muhammad's alter ego, one and the same person. From all the above, the reader has to come to his or her own conclusion.